It feels like every week a new Shonen Jump title is getting started only to be cancelled a few weeks later, with very few exceptions due to the writer's health and the success of those series. But what about the series that did get cancelled? Did they deserve to be cancelled, or did the Shonen Jump executors swing their axe too quickly? I read one series that met its fate earlier than the writer intended, Black Torch by Tsuyoshi Takaki. The series made it to 19 chapters, but was forced to rush to its conclusion due to its cancellation. So did Black Torch deserve to be cancelled? Let's find out. Before I truly begin to talk about the series, here's the obligatory spoiler warning. I will be talking about major spoilers for the series, and it's only 19 chapters, plus it's on the Shonen Jump app, so you don't have to make a big financial investment, so go read it. Black Torch follows our main character, Gyro Azuma, who is sort of that outcast type since he can talk to animals. He finds a cat named Rago in the woods and takes it home with him. Rago then tries to run away, but encounters a beast called a Mononoke, who tries to kill Rago but is stopped by Gyro. Unfortunately, Gyro's heroic nature causes him to receive a mortal wound, and Rago returns the favor by merging with Gyro, creating a half-human, half-Mononoke hybrid. This catches the attention of the Espionage Bureau, which deals with Mononoke threats, and they give Gyro and Rago two options, death or work for the organization as part of a special Black Ops-style group called Black Torch. Of course, they chose the latter. When they get to meet the other members of Black Torch, there's Reiji, who has great sword skills but is a bit stuck up and has has some prejudice against Mononoke, which causes some conflict between him, Rago, and Gyro. Next is Ichika, who's a bit feisty, but has her reasons. And as the series progresses, she opens up more towards the group. She also showcases that the manga likes to draw certain assets, although I'd like to remind you of a certain detail. Then there's Ryosuke, who is the older, lazy smoker who's in charge of the group and gets them into dangerous scenarios that he vows to take responsibility for. There's also this lolly and this office girl, but the lolly is only there to push forward the plot threads and give certain conveniences as to why a character is suddenly stronger, or how they're able to communicate through a barrier, even though all communication is supposed to be cut off. And the office girl is only there to take care of Ryosuke's paperwork and other menial tasks. She's pretty much the Alfred of the group, but gets little appreciation. If any of the character archetypes or the concept of a demon merging with a human sounds familiar to you, I want you to take that comparison and throw it out the window. Chainsaw Man came out the year Black Torch was cancelled, and the one shot that started Jujutsu Kaisen came out in 2017, while Black Torch started in December of 2016, which means the mangaka didn't copy the formulas of those series. They may have taken inspiration from other series, but that sort of taking and giving is common not just in the manga space, but in writing as a whole. So take this series as it is and try not to compare it to something it's not trying to be. We're also introduced to some interesting villains. There's Amagi who is the main antagonist and comes off as a genuine threat, especially when he starts cannibalizing other Mononoke to gain more strength for the final battle. There's Koga who sort of acts as Gyro's equal. There's Roran who is honestly my favorite design wise and he's in love with Ichika. Shinji who is Reiji's brother and is also controlled by a demon possessed sword. And Tetsuwa who pushes Gyro further up the power scale after their battle. All of these antagonists are dangerous in their own right, but Amagi stands above the others because of the lengths he's willing to go to in order to achieve his goals. So after Black Torch is assembled, they visit the spot where Rago was released, but don't learn much. They then go through some illusion training, and we find out why Reggie and Ichika joined the Bureau of Espionage, and what happened to Rago in the past, and why he was sealed away. Reggie joined the organization in hopes of freeing his brother from the demonic sword's control. Ichika followed in her parents' footsteps, and she believed her mother was dead until she learned that her mom was actually encased in stone by a Mononoke, which motivated her to fight these monsters and find a way to break the stone. Lastly, Rago sealed himself away after Amagi murdered an entire peaceful village because Rago wouldn't join him in his quest to put Mononoke on top of the food chain. This training not only reminds Reggie and Ichika of their goals, but also motivates Rago to help stop Amagi in the present day. The group is sent on another mission where they fight some of Amagi 
Suzuki's followers, and Rago is separated from Gyro towards the end of the battle. But Rago left his power inside with Gyro, who had to learn how to control it since Rago was acting as a set of training wheels. So Gyro went through his Dagobah training arc and learned to control the power for 15 minutes. Meanwhile, Amagi has been consuming the hearts of other Mononoke and gaining even more power. Amagi makes his presence known at Black Torch's HQ, and we get an epic battle between Mononoke and the Bureau of Espionage. Gyro goes to face Amagi on his own, merges once again with Raigo, and kills Amagi. We then get a few pages of Gyro writing down a report, which gives exposition for what happened to certain characters. Shinji still remains under the control of the Demon Sword. Ichika's mom is still trapped in stone. Koga has gone MIA since the final battle. Roran remains in custody, although he doesn't mind it. And Gyro remains at Black Torch ready for any potential Mononoke threats that might show up. It ends in a way that says this world will continue to live on, and there are more adventures to be had, but as the readers, we won't see those events, giving fanfic writers the perfect continuation point for their own stories. But I think the ending we did get is the most satisfying option the writer had. Although Black Torch had a short run, there were two themes I noticed in this story, trusting and working with others, and seeking harmony between species. The first is explored with Gyro and Rago. Gyro up and until his merger with Rago had only relied on himself to get out of situations. Rago is the same way, he wanted to leave Gyro and take care of his problems by himself, but after his heroic acts, Rago returned the favor. Not only do they have to learn to trust one another and work as one unit, but they also have to give the rest of Black Torch the same treatment. As the writer John Doan said in his poem, No Man is an Island, no man is an island entire of itself. Every man is a piece of the continent, a part of the main. If a clod be washed away by the sea, Europe is the less, as well as if a promontory were, as well as any manner of thy friends or of thine own were. Any man's death diminishes me, because I am involved in mankind, and therefore never sin to know for whom the bell tolls. It tolls for thee. Gyro, Rago, Reggie, and Ichika are no longer islands, but a continent. So when one of them struggles, they go to help one another. When the others are needed to help stop Magi, they answer the call. They're no longer individual soldiers, but a unit. They are black torch. The second theme is harmony, specifically living in harmony with the Mononoke and humans. Imagi's whole quest is to put Mononoke at the top of the chain of command, returning to the times when Mononoke were treated as gods and humans were treated as lesser beings, like lambs for the slaughter. But Gyro and Rago disprove that one species has to be on top of the other. They're able to live together in harmony, with none being higher than the other. They're able to live as equals. The same could be said about Ibuki, and Manjimaro also proves this since he was once a human, but gave up his humanity to spend eternity with the one he loves. Both duos shatter Imagi's logic that one species has to be on top of the other, when in reality, they can live together in harmony, not one above the other, but as equals. Although I think Black Torch is a great series, I think there is one major flaw that might have aided in the series cancellation. And the flaw was that it tried to set up too many plot threads too early in the series. As I like to explain it, it's like a shotgun blast of plot threads. A bunch fires off in one shot and spreads out. I'm going to be hypocritical here and compare it to Jujutsu Kaisen, but I want to focus on how JJK introduces its plot threads. For the first few volumes, there's one plot thread and that's Yuji learning to control his newfound power. There may be more set up in the earlier volumes than I realized but as someone who has only read the first six volumes so far, volumes one through three only have one glaring plot thread. Meanwhile, in Black Torch, there are a dozen threads introduced in volumes one through four. Gyro and Rago are learning to get along, Reggie is trying to free his brother from the demonic sword's control, and they swear to duel again even though we never see another fight between them. Ichika's mother is stuck in stone and never gets freed, despite that being Ichika's major character arc. Something ominous happened to Gyro's dad, although we never find out what that was. Koga arc from working against the group to fighting alongside them is rushed because the mangaka didn't have enough time to flesh it out, and there's something really weird going on with those floating heads that control the Bureau of Espionage. You can't tell me there wasn't going to be something major with those floating heads. I sensed it with Makima, and I'm getting the same vibes from those Pokio nose looking heads. I have a spidey sense for these things. It's just too much too early. And I'm not saying that this sort of shotgun blast storytelling is impossible. Attack on Titan is a great example of this being done really 
really well. The thing that separates those two series is that while AOT uses the same approach, it does it differently, with one clear plot thread and the others being sewn in in the background. You don't notice these things being set up in the background during your first read, but during your second or third read throughs, you notice how Isayama sets up future plot threads. But with Takaki's method, you notice immediately when something is set up. Everything is out in the open, so there are no hidden details to call back to when you're on the 12th volume of the series. So it's even harder to try to wrap up all the plot threads at the end. So some go unfinished and are rushed to meet an unfortunate deadline. And I don't mean to bash the manga or the series. I think it's really good. If it had continued or come out during the manga boom of the 2020s, the new gen big three might have changed just a bit. I just think the way the manga introduced new plot threads was a wrong approach. They should have focused on the main thread and introduced more ideas further down the line. But we'll never know what lengths the series could have reached if it had not been cancelled. I could continue to talk about the what ifs, but that won't change what happened. Despite the issues the series has, I really do think it's worth a read. It's only 19 chapters and Viz is still printing the physicals, and it's available on the Shonen Jump app if you have a subscription. I'm not sponsored by Viz or Shonen Jump, I just really think this manga deserves more attention. But those are my thoughts on Black Torch. I don't think it should have been cancelled, but Shonen Jump is going to focus on the Japanese market and what those readers are interested in. But let me know in the comments below if you agree with Black Torch's cancellation or if you wish the series had continued. I'm curious to hear your thoughts. I want to thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in my next video. Goodbye.